Hey guys, what's going on? And today we are going to be rebuilding Juventus by using this flawless 4231 tactic made by NUFC Pro. It is going to be his 4231 Pro Ball, one of the best 4231s I think that you can currently use on FM23. So let's get into this rebuild and kick things off. So when you take on the challenge at Juventus, it is actually quite a lot. You're predicted to finish first by the media prediction. To match that, though, you have got a great reputation, fantastic training facilities and youth facilities, as well as quite a big following and also quite a decent team. Not the best in terms of you have got quite a lot of replacements to do, bring in some younger players, and also you are in a little bit of debt. Um, but to be honest, it is a little bit of a project. Obviously, they're going through quite a rough spell in real life, which is exactly why, in my opinion, it is a rebuild. And plus, they suited this tactic out really well. So I thought, let's combine the two and make one hell of a video, since the Dortmund one done very, very well. Now, this is the expectations and exactly. Um, this is what not, not the media think, what the board wants. So this is what we have to do. Now, what they want is to become the most reputable, reputable, uh, reputable team in Italy. Why is that so hard to say? Required, um, again, I think that's quite easy to do in my opinion. Work within a wage budget, that shouldn't be an issue really. I don't think we're going to sign too many players, especially in the first window. And I'm hoping to get some of the higher pay players out the door anyway. Reach the latter stage of the Champions League. That shouldn't be difficult. Um, I'd like to think we can get at least to the quarters, if not the semis. Win the Serie A is desired, so not required, desired. Um, I think we can possibly win it, to be honest. And challenge for the Italian Cup is favoured, so not really too high up on the, on the ladder at all. Going into the first transfer window, which we do need to buy players because we haven't got enough, to be honest. We've only got 15 million, so we're not going to be spending a lot of money at all. I don't plan on spending lots. I'm going to see if there's anyone I can get out of the club who possibly are on a really high wage that we don't need. Because at the end of the day, that is why the wage bill is looking so ugly. But we're going to go over this in terms of just talk about the players we have in each position. So to start with, we've got Chesney, we've got Perrin. So in my opinion, this position right here is more than enough. We don't need to buy a keeper for a couple of free seasons. Chesney's got three more seasons, four more seasons. Perrin's completely fine as backup. So that is the first position completely covered. Over to the right back, and this is an iffy one. Quadrado's 34. He's not the best. He's okay for a season, possibly. Danilo's decent, but he's on quite a lot of money per week for my liking anyway. Um, Drado's on a lot more. That's the big issue. He's a 34-year-old on 155k a week, so I do want to try and sort that out if I can. Centre-backs, again, we've got Bonucci, who's 35. He's a club legend. I've got to take that into consideration. He is very good, but he's on 200k. Bremer's already on 155k, but he's a very good centre-half. That position there is kind of fine for the first season. Ideally, I'd bring in another centre-back. Um, I'm going to have to bring one of these flexible players, like a wrench, who can play centre-back and right-back. Someone like him or like a Timber, because I'm going to need to cover multiple positions with one signing. Um, we've got Regani as well. Gatti. I'm um, going over to the left back. We've got Sandro. We've got Danilo. Disquiglio as well. So a couple of good options there. Again, quite aging though in terms of both Sandro and Disquiglio. We're going to have to look to bring in some younger players in that position at some point. The two in midfield then, we're going to start off with the Metzala. We're going to have Pogba, who obviously faces injury for majority of the first season. We've got per um, Paredes on loan, Locatelli on loan, who does obviously become permanent. Rabio, McKenney, um, Fagoli, um, also Moretti. Um, we've got some decent midfielders, to be honest, in that area of the pitch. On the right-hand side, we've got Chiesa. We've got Di Maria, who, you know, I thought he was on more money than that, but it's another player over 100k a week going on a 34-year-old player. In the midfield, that's the one position which we do need to sort of get more options in because Pogba can play that slightly more advanced attacker midfield role. At the moment, he can't because he's injured. And to be honest, I would like someone, you know, I've got a player in mind who I'm not going to say until if we do sign him. If not, it'll be a long lost secret until the next rebuild. But I would like to probably definitely go out and sign a really good attacker midfield player on the left hand side we've got Kostic we've got Moise Keane we've got Chiesa who can play there as well again I would like another good winger because there's quite a bit of a drop off after Chiesa and Di Maria um Kostic is good but he's not great is he if we're being honest and strikers the one good thing we've got going for us we've got um, Valovic obviously he's got to be the main striker the star man and we have got Milik and also Keane both on loan and Two good backup options, to be honest with you. So that position is quite comfortable. But 
I did say I was going to go and sign a player, and that is exactly what i done. Now, I said this guy at the top of my head. I did go out and make it happen. We went out and we signed Wrench. Now, the reason I got this guy is purely because he can play three positions. He can play right back, he can play centre back, and he can play in the deeper, deeper areas of midfield. And that is needed, guys. In this system, with the players we have, we need someone like this because we've got quite an aging back line. There's going to be injuries and this guy has got quality, but he can also grow, could improve a lot. He's already a standard of a Serie A player and he can actually grow to a four-star ability. The very well-rounded attributes, he doesn't really specialise in one thing, probably because he does play pretty much everywhere. So you are getting, I would say, a balanced player, more than one that is absolutely world-class. But as I said, with that fairly determined personality as well, we can improve this guy a lot. And we actually spent 24 million on him, which to be honest, I don't even think is that bad in my opinion. And we did manage to offload Danilio to PSG, freeing up that wage budget and paying for pretty much half of this wrench transfer. So we've not affected Juventus's money too much. And also we have brought in a great replacement for Danilio, who can also cover a centre-back position if required. And this is going to be the team filtered by the best 11 going into what is going to be the first season. It's going to be Chesney, Quadrado, Bremer, Benucci, Sandro, Locatelli, Rabio, Pogba, Di Maria, Chiesa, and Vlalovic. Now, obviously, Pogba's injured, Chiesa's injured, Bremer's injured. So, for the first few games, it's going to be a nice mix match. I don't know who's going to play where. Possibly Rabio going into the AM's position, uh, Moretti, possibly. Goalie, but I don't know what's going to happen. So obviously, I do simulate it. I leave it to the assistant manager. All I tell him to do is use the tactic. Um, I don't tell him to use the current team because when I do that, you then don't get to use the whole squad. You only really get to use a start on 11. And the whole point of these rebuilds is to not make a good start on 11. It's to make a good squad, not just a start on 11. So let's get into the first season anyway after all of that drama. And hopefully, we can see a little bit of improvement just from signing a good backup option in terms of defense and a good little flex player. So this is going to be the first season simulator, guys. And we managed to win the Serie A, which to be honest, I was expected. I did say that. Unfortunately, though, the aim of this rebuild is to turn Juventus into Champions League winners. And we didn't get any... Well, we kind of got near it. We got to the semi-finals and lost to Barcelona, which in my opinion, I think is quite a winnable tie. But we did lose. It's done. We can't do anything about it. However, we did score 100 goals, ranking us the best in this category and the ninth best at conceding. So that is clearly the area that we need to go out and improve on. And that is 100% what I'm going to look to do. It's going to be Vlalovic coming in with 42 goals and Fagoli contributing with 13 assists. We are going to go into a little bit more of a breakdown of that, though. So Vlalovic, as I said, with 42. We're going to have Milik coming in with 24. 14 for Fagoli. Kulaveski is out on loan for Tottenham, getting 13. 10 coming in for Chiesa, Di Maria coming in with what is going to be a disappointing 8, 6 for Pogba, Kostic with 5, and that sort of drops off a little bit. In terms of assists, 8 coming in for um, Vlalovic, 13 coming in for Fagoli, Kulaveski having quite a good season at Spurs, Chiesa coming in with 9, I don't know why I keep mentioning Kulaveski as he is going to be gone anyway, Chiesa coming in with 9, Di Maria coming in with 7, 11 coming in for Pogba, Kostic contributing with 6, and 10 coming out of Quadrado. So quite a good balance, to be honest, in terms of goals. Um, hence, we were the best in the league, scoring 100. And also quite a few different assisters of the ball. Some defenders, some midfielders, some attacking players. So it is good to see when you are seeing everyone get involved because then you're not purely relying on one player. Let's single out one player on here, though, if we can see him. Paul Pogba obviously come back from that horrific injury He's done quite well. Six goals, 11 assists. I'm quite impressed with that, considering obviously he has come back from a horrific injury and hopefully he can sort of push on because that is kind of the star man of this rebuild alongside of Lalovic. It's the man I want to build around. Obviously him going back to Juventus had such a hype that instantly got killed because of that injury. And going into what is going to be the second season or the second transfer window, we have been given 53 million pounds, 54 million. And again, I think we could arguably deserve more, but I am going to take it. I feel like we can definitely look to offload a couple of players, some older players that aren't playing as much, and hopefully we can bring in some players on instalments so we can, you know, spend 53 up front, but possibly 
spend around about 100 mil, to be honest. You usually can do that when you do add-ons when it comes to buying players. And we've not been playing about, guys. We have not been playing about at all because we have gone and we have signed Deot Upacano. Now, this guy did cost an arm and a leg, but you get what you pay for at the end of the day. And this guy is absolutely sensational. 17 tackling, 17 pace, 15 acceleration, 16 aggression, 17 bravery, good strength as well. Everything about him screams out a world-class centre-half, and that is exactly what he is, and that is why we had to sign him. He's played for some good clubs now. He's played for Salzburg, Leipzig, Bayern, played for some really good sides, and he is ready for this leap, and I genuinely think this guy is a Champions League quality win and defender. I really do. We partner him alongside of a former RB Leipzig man, and this was the cam or the attacking midfielder that I did want, who I was going to keep a secret unless we could get him. And we did get him, and that is going to be Danny Olmo. Now, this guy has got so much potential in game and in real life. I watch a lot of Leipzig football, and he is a really, really good player. I think, you know, he possibly is not on the same level as Nkunku, but in my opinion, he's still a very big threat and he still can grow and he's already got some fantastic attributes on him. You know, he's got great first touch, good dribbling, good flair, good off the ball, good teamwork, good vision, good technique. Not the quickest, but to be honest, he doesn't really have to be in this system. As long as he's good on the ball, which he is, um, th that's pretty much the main thing. He's got good passing, good vision. He's literally going to be the player to find the balls to the wingers and the striker that's all he's going to be doing so for me it's pretty much made for this team in my opinion and that is going to be the only two players we could afford to bring in because we did have the permanent deals alongside of that of moist Keane from everton 24 million and locatelli from sassiolo for 30 million two players that i would actually want anyway so i'm glad they did come because they are going to get game time especially locatelli is going to be first team they Opacano cost us £69 million. Obviously, installments were used for this. And Danny Olmo from Leipzig cost us £33.5 million. So quite a bit of money spent, but you have gained two fantastic, in my opinion, some of the best players you can possibly sign. And this is going to be the team going into what is going to be the second season. It's going to be Chesney, Quadrado, Opacano, Bremer, Sandro, Locatelli, Pogba, Di Maria, Olmo, Chiesa, and Valalovic. Now, Quick heads up, because you're probably wondering, what are you doing? You've got so many old players in this starting eleven. Fix it. Quadrado will not leave, so he's not getting any offers to the club. I can't. I, I offered the mutual termination. He would not accept that he's staying. Same with Sandro and Di Maria again. I can't get rid of him. No one wants him. Um, I did actually receive um quite an insult and bid for Pogba. He's worth about sixty-five million pounds. I got offered twenty-five from PSG. I told him to do one because I'm not selling him for that little. Although he is getting older, I can at least get forty to fifty for him in my opinion. He's had quite a good season considering he was injured, and I think do you know what? Let's keep him. Let's actually try and go forward with him. He's still got a few years. He's decent quality. Let's try and make it work. So let's get into what is going to be the second season. And hopefully we can improve that Champions League semi-final to a minimum of getting to the final. So second season has been simulated and it is an improvement because not only have we won the Serie A a lot more convincingly, but we've also managed to win the Italian Cup versus Florentina and the Super Cup versus what Milan is that? That is going to be a screenshot, so I can't actually see. I do apologize. I think that possibly would be AC Milan, if I'm right. I'm not entirely sure, but one of the Milans, I wish it would say, it should really say that. But again, we have completely fixed the issues here, guys. 117 goals scored and only 31 conceded now. So we've gone from not being the best to being the best of the best at conceding, only letting in 31 goals, purely from making one defensive signing. And that was to bring in Upacano. And that is exactly why I signed him, because I know what that guy can do. He can come in, and if you partner him alongside a Bremer, a Benucci, they're, they're going to be indestructible. And that is exactly what, and, you know, it's, it just shows you do have to spend money, but when you do, you get results like that. And these are going to be some of the squad stats. Valovic, absolutely incredible. 71 goals, 20 for Chiesa, Olmo having a great season, 19 goals, 15 goals coming in for Pogba, a good season there, 8 for Di Maria, 7 for Pagoli, Bremer with 7, and a little bit of a drop-off there from there onwards. Um, 7 as well, sorry, for Paredes. In terms of assists, we've got 13 down here from what is going to be wrench. That's good to see. 5 coming in for Desquiglio. 10 coming in there for Quadrado, still contributing at his age, which is good to see. 8 coming in for Kostic, obviously 
pretty much a, a sort of substitute player at this point. Um, five coming in there from it's going to be for goalie, 28 coming in for Di Maria, eight coming in for Pogba, 20 for Olmo in his first season, 20 assists, 19 goals absolutely incredible and 14 assists for Chiesa so a lot of fantastic seasons coming in from a lot of players here you're seeing you know some good match ratings here and you know even down here some decent match ratings not necessarily you know getting on for the eights but you know we've really got to take our hats off for, for Vlalovic at the end of the day 71 goals in a season it's looking a bit like Erling Haaland and when you're doing that you know what what, what more can you expect and going into what is going to be the third season. So it's another opportunity to strengthen. It's another opportunity to try and, you know, rebuild this side. Again, this video is not going to be done until we have successfully rebuilt this side into Champions League winners. And this is the best shot we've got. We've got £100 million to spend. And again, as I like to always say, installments, this basically means about 150 because you can easily whack on 50 million installments. And I'm hoping we can possibly go and sign another winger whether that be first team or backup is something we can look into really going to try and focus to offload some of these leeches in the club um even though quadrado, quadrado had a good season he's not worth the wee, the wage that he's on he's getting old i want him out the door um same with sandro to be honest as well and possibly even Di maria so we're going to see what we can do in that scenario and hopefully in this third season we can at least make it to this champions league final so we have been very busy as you can see from the first player on the screen now, we have managed to sell Sandro. We've also terminated a couple of people finally. And we have a little bit of a shape up. The first player we bring in to strengthen this team is going to be Martinelli from Arsenal. Now, you are going to see the amount we spent on these players after we've shown you the actual players individually. Martinelli was always a name of mine. I thought it'd be very exciting to get him into the Serie A, see what he can offer. And to be honest, he can offer as good as anyone. He's a fantastic player. And in my opinion... He's one of the players that looks so bright in the Premier League. I feel like he would tear apart this division, and that is exactly why I brought him in. We then go over to a left back, because as I said, we did get rid of Sandro. We need a, you know, a start on left back, if not a backup, behind um, what would be Squiggly, I believe. Um, and that is going to be Malasia from Manchester United, a player who, again, I think has got good potential, possibly a little bit overhyped by the United fans. I'm a United fan myself, and I am guilty of it. But again, a fantastic fullback who definitely can grow, and I think is very good for this division especially, and has got some good attributes on him as well. Good agility, reasonably quick, good fitness, good determination, good work rate. Tackling could be a little bit better, but we can improve him on that as well. Next player is going to be another centre-half, and that is going to be... Galvini, I believe that's how you say that. One of the best options you can actually find yourself if you have to sign from the Serie A, which I believe we had to do for registration requirements. And this guy is an absolute baller. 15 tackling, 16 stamina, good pace on him, reasonably tall as well. Good anticipation, good concentration, good positioning, and only 20 years of age. So him and the Pocano are basically going to be the start on back two. And now we've got Bremer as backup and also Wrench which again is absolutely phenomenal. It really is. So we've got this guy and Upacano at the back. That is, that is 100% a Champions League winning back duo. So I'm hoping that is what we need to push us over the edge because to be honest, going forward, we're actually quite good anyway. So Martinelli was just a little, I say a little treat, but that, that should finalize going forward because we already were scoring loads and loads of goals, but we didn't stop there. Went and we signed Trubin because I did notice Chesney was getting older and, you know, we did need someone to sort of replace him. So what we've done was we're going to keep Chesney. We offloaded Perrin because he isn't going to be as good as this guy when it comes to a backup goalkeeper. This guy is only 22 years of age. Again, he's got a lot, a lot of learning to do and he can do that because Chesney is going to be the player that does, you know, play for a couple more years as well. Now, this guy, again, the only thing I'm concerned about is his one-on-ones. He can grow. That's what it said on the scout report. But here I am seeing close to full potential. So we're going to have to see how he does grow. I am, if I was managing myself, I would play him in sort of rotation games, cup games. But for me, he is, he's always been good in FM. He's always an option I've gone for. He's never let me down. And his height does help a lot. Him just being big sometimes is what you need. Sometimes stats just go out the window or attributes, whatever you want to say. And that... In my opinion for the price we paid for him is an absolute steal that isn't going to be the last signing though because if we didn't sign one winger we signed two 
we actually went over to Barcelona and we signed Rafinha, an elite winger. Um, and to be honest, we wanted a pre-made winger, and that's what we got. He's a winger with absolutely rapid pace, fantastic dribbling, great first touch, great technique, great bit of flair on him. He is slightly older, 27 years of age, so you're looking at roughly about three, no, not three, probably about five years before you notice any sort of decline, which is more than enough for this rebuild. And he's already a lead in Serie A player, which is exactly what we wanted. We wanted players that I can bring in that can dominate the Serie A, but can also cause issues in the Champions League, as that is the whole purpose of this video. And I feel like now, the Acer, Rafinha, Martinelli, I mean, these names are big names that can easily win this Champions League for us. And this is what we're going to be spending. And it is quite a lot of money. Obviously, you can see here, we sold Perrin to Napoli for 9 million. And we sold Sandro to, I believe, Flamingo on the free because he, it, you know, I expired his contract anyway. We spent 143 million on Martinelli, but that is what you spend when you try and get the big boys in. And that's exactly what we had to do. We then go to Tom, Tyler Malashia, go to Manchester United, where we spent 33 and a half million on Malashia. I don't think that's too bad, to be honest. Um, there wasn't too many left backs of that sort of age that I was going after. Um, because obviously I spent a lot of money on getting Marcinelli in, and I sort of probably overspent in that, so I had to sort of reserve myself going forwards. But we still signed some fantastic players. Um, Scalvini obviously cost us 52 million, Ruben only cost us 12.7, and Rafinha cost us 52. So Yes, it was a very expensive transfer window. A lot of add-ons were definitely used. Um, anyone that watches my streams know I love an add-on. So, you, you know, when you see me with a 100 mil budget, you can expect to see a 200 mil transfer window because I feel like not enough people use that add-on option. And I'm just hoping it is a bit of a gamble because in my opinion now, with this squad here, we have to be winning the Champions League. It is absolutely incredible. Chesney, Wrench, Bremer, Upacano, Malasia, Locatelli, Pogba, Chiesa, Olmo, Martinelli, Vidalovic on the bench. There's some fantastic players as well. Rafinha doesn't even get into the team. I mean, it's a fantastic side, and I really think this could be the team that wins the Champions League. So that being said, let's get into the third season, and hopefully this can be the lucky one. So season three clearly is the magic season because we have managed to win not only the Italian League, the Super Cup, but we have gone out and won the Champions League against Real Madrid in the final. And this is exactly what we wanted to do. So that is going to be the rebuild complete, but obviously there's still lots of things we need to discuss and go through. And the first one is going to be the fact that we scored 128 goals, conceded 27, so the second best this time, but still a very, very good stat line. In terms of the squad, we're going to go to goals, 77 from the star man himself. We're expecting it at this point. Chiesa with 29, Martinelli with 27, 18 for Olmo, Rafinha with 11, Paul Pogba with 9, 8 for Scalvini, Upacano with 6, so even the centre-backs contributing. In terms of assists, we've got 24 for Martinelli, Olmo with 22, 16 for Chiesa, Wrench coming in with 16, which is absolutely incredible from the right-back position. Vlanovic actually contributing with 14 as well. 13 for Rafinha, 11 for Pogba, for Godi coming in with 11, and 8 coming in for Quadrado, and 6 for Malasia. Quadrado's the only player I couldn't actually get out of the door. I thought I did for some reason, but he's the one player I, I couldn't get out of the door. For some reason, he, he's always been here, so he's always going to stay. He's like furniture at this place. Um... Have a quick look then. So data hub 3.37. Um, again, this isn't really sort of designed to dominate possession. So the pass completion isn't always going to be perfect because you are going to be playing slightly more direct balls sometimes, not always, but some of the time. So what was that? 3.37, team defending 0.71. So very, very good in terms of the goals you're scoring compared to the goals you're conceding. Absolutely sensational stats there. We're going to go over to what do they leave us with? 64 million so what i'm going to do is when i'm breaking down the tactic is we are going to sort of we're going to break the tactic down and when we do the player roles we're going to discuss the players that we've left at the club and also possibly players i'd look to bring in with that 64 million if we were going to continue but obviously we've done exactly what we wanted to do we've won the champions league juventus are back on top we've created one hell of a squad and we've left them with 64 million in the bank to spend to further that team and go above and beyond but Let's get into your favourite part of this video. I know it still is. Even though it's a rebuild, I know you guys love the tactics. Um, I do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the rebuild section as well. So, 
Please do leave a like on this video and do comment next what team you want to see rebuilt or possibly a tactic you want to see rebuilt with as well. Obviously, there's two things you can suggest now. And do subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. The channel is growing absolutely rapidly at the moment and it does mean a lot. So let's break down this tactic right now. So this is going to be the 4-2-3-1 Pro Bowl. Obviously, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I did not make this. Do not shoot me. Hands up. I did not make it but this is a fantastic tactic I had to share because I know a lot of you guys are struggling in terms of getting results. And this one is very, very good. And when you have got a good team and you've sort of got the players you want, it is flawless. It really is. And I have to give the guy credit. I really do. Um, so shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you. So let's get in to this then. So we're going to start here. So positive mentality in possession. You want fairly wide, pass into space, overlap left and right, fail of defense, slightly shorter with the directness slightly higher tempo be more expressive run at defense work ball into the box and low crosses selected going into transition you want counter press counter distribute to the fullbacks and the center backs and take short goal kicks out of possession you want a higher defensive line a high press line of engagement much more often prevent your goalkeeper distribution get stuck in and stop crosses if you're picking if you're picking up loads of bookings by the way simply tick this off but for me i like to use tactics as people make them so i didn't want to change it but if you are picking up loads of bookings turn that off let's go into the player roles then so what we're going to do in this sort of theme of the video we're going to talk about the players we've left and then we're going to go into the actual instructions so we've left them with chesney and trubin i think two fantastic goalkeepers so we've done a very good job there Sweeper keeper, simply on the defend duty and shorter pass and selected. On the right back position, we've left them with Wrench. We've also left them with Quadrado. And also, I would like to point out that we have also left them with Desquiglio. And in my opinion, they're good enough options to not have to sign anyone immediately into the following or into the next transfer window. But on the right back position, it's going to be a fullback on the attack duty. And he is going to be told to be balanced, stay wider, get further forward, shorter passing, and shoot less often selected. Two centre backs, both ball playing defenders as well. We've left them with Upacano, Bremer, Rugani, Scalvino, Scalvoni, Scalvini, and Gatti. Five fantastic centre backs. On the right hand side, you want him on balanced and shorter passing. On the left hand side, you want him on balanced and shorter passing. So fairly straightforward. Left backs, we've left them with Malashia, Pellegrini, Desquiglio, and Frobotta. On Malashia, you want him to be told to be a fullback on the attack duty. Balanced, get further forward, stay wider, shorter passing, and shoot less often. Midfield, then, you've got a deep line playmaker, but midfield areas, we've left them with the likes of, obviously, Locatelli, Pogba, Olmo. You've got McKenny, Paredes, Fagoli, Rabio, Zakaria, Artur, um, Revea. You've left them with fantastic options in that midfield. And again, if you wanted to, for some reason, strengthen it, like at one point I did want in Kunku, you've got 64 million to try and make that deal happen. But the deep line playmaker, you want him to be on less often and standard with dribble less on in the dribbling category. Next to him, Mehmet Zala on the support duty. Less often, get further forward, stay wider, standard, dribble more and shoot less often. As we've already discussed this role, on the attacker midfielder, on the attack duty, you want less often, get further forward, roam from position, so effective on this game. Standard, shoot less often and dribble less selected. On the left-hand side, we've left them with Martinelli, um, Pajaka, Rafinha, Kostic. Obviously, you've got Chiesa on this side as well. So you've, you've left them with sort of a handful of really good wingers there, to be honest. But two, it's going to be two inside forwards. On the left-hand side, there's going to be a support duty. It's going to be less often, get further forward, sit narrower, cut inside, standard, and that is going to be it. On the right-hand side with Chiesa, it's going to be less often, get further forward, sit narrower, cut inside, standard, and that is going to be it. The player up top is going to be Vlalovic. We've left them with Vlalovic and Pajaka. Obviously, Moise Keane has moved on by now. This is the position I would probably look to get a good backup in. And that's why of that 64 million can be used. That's probably the priority is to get a backup striker in. Um, I mean, Vlalovic still isn't old. He's only 25, so you don't really need to replace him. Um, he is literally a perfect striker. So just look to bring in a backup option. Advance forward then, you want him to be less often and shoot more often with standard. Very basic, but it's exactly what I do on my system. Shoot more often is pretty much all you need to have a fantastic striker scoring tons and tons of goals. But that is going to be this tactic broken down for you guys, and that is going to be Juventus rebuilt. 
from a struggling Juventus to Serie A champions to Serie A Cup winners to Champions League winners. We've done it all. And as always, you guys can download this tactic for yourselves in the description from the FM Scout website. Full credit, obviously, is not given to me. So do show some love to the tactic creator as well in the FM Scout comments. But it's going to be it for me today, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.